Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here with you once again. Now it's time for episode 203 of Album of the Day, uh, which uh, uh, I know I've kind of, I'm a little late uh, doing this review uh, because, you know, it's summertime and, you know, I've been a little busy uh, this time of year going on my first vacation and all of that, but... Anyway, uh, aside all that, let's just get on with the review, which for today's album review, uh, I'm going to be reviewing the latest uh, from a Baltimore-based dream pop duo who uh, have definitely uh, been critical darlings uh, that started out as very kind of underground, kind of stripped back dream pop duo, uh, and then turning into like uh, one of the most successful and critically acclaimed uh, uh, indie acts of uh, the past uh, uh, decade uh, when it comes to the dream pop sound. Of course, I'm talking about one of my lo uh, one of uh, my local indie bands, Beach House, um, House, uh, which I've been a fan of theirs uh, since like uh, dating all the way back to when Bloom came out in 2012, so I've actually known this band for over six years, so I have a pretty soft spot for them, uh, and I'm here to review their latest album, which just dropped on May 11th of 2018. The album is called Seven, and as you can see, I own this album on beautiful vinyl, um, which uh, I'm pretty excited to own this on vinyl, because not only is this one of my favorite records of the year, but also because the artwork is just so gorgeous and beautiful and it somehow fits uh, the dynamics of the album. So I like to just listen to this album on my turntable and literally like lose myself in this album cover. And there's the back. Of course this is their uh, fifth release for Sub Pop and their seventh studio album, so the title, Seven, actually makes se total sense. Mm -hmm. And I love this gatefold, too. There's a lot of really cool collage art going on on this album. And uh, it's got a insert here, it has all the lyrics in there, which that's always a bonus whenever they include the lyrics in the vinyl. And this is one of their first albums to have an outside producer on it. And in this case, it's, um, like, they departed from their usual engineer, Chris Cody, and included, and they worked with Sonic Boom, who co-produced the record. <sighs> and there's side A. And then there's side B. And there's the track list there. It's, uh, 11 tracks out of at approximately 46 minutes. Yeah, and there was a download card in here, but just like I always do whenever there's a download card in there, I used it because, yeah, I love the, uh, you know, how it gives me a more convenient way to listen to it. Yeah, and that's the vinyl packaging for uh, Beach House's latest album, Seven. <clears throat> like, uh, I never reviewed Beach House before, even though for the past few years, I've been a pretty big fan of their work, and as you can see, I am wearing a Beach House t-shirt in this video, too. Um, that sort of demonstrates my fandom right there. Uh, like, I, I love Bloom. It's an amazing record. It was my introduction to Beach House, and it's definitely one that I have a pretty strong connection with, uh, with, uh, because it's just a very beautiful record. Of course, the one that everyone considers the masterpiece in their discography would have to be Teen Dream, which I have only heard, like, little clips, so I can't really comment on that one, but I also do have a vinyl copy of, uh, Devotion, their sophomore record, and their last for Car Park Records, and I think it's that's a great record, too, and certainly uh, one that builds upon their stripped-back debut. Um, their, their joint releases in 2015, Depression Cherry and Thank Your Lucky Stars, 
wasn't a big fan of them. I thought they were just kind of, they were kind of boring in my opinion because Beach House, like uh, while they were kind of constantly trying out new things on pretty much every record before those two, I feel on those two they were trying to strip things back and make it sound more streamlined, but it just kind of fell through the cracks and just sounded like them just playing it safe. However, as a fan, I kept my mind open for their next record. And upon hearing Seven, I would say this. Seven is Beach House's best album in years. I mean, this is a very, like, uh, unlike the band's previous records that were very kind of stripped back and melodic, uh, Lala, melodic, even though it was definitely occasionally kind of experimental, like the Teen Dream definitely had some interest, instrumental curveballs from what I heard. But this one is like, it literally takes their, exp their ambition to the next level here. I mean, this is a heavier, more immersive, uh, and more accessible version of Beach House right here. I mean, you can hear Sonic Boom's production, like, uh, not in a way that's like super like clean or like uh, uh, polished or anything like that, but in a way that's plenty more like uh, accessible, but also uh, with uh, plenty of uh, mistakes and very cool sort of surprise moments happening uh, to make this album super compelling. That's something that's really shown on the opening track, Dark Spring. Uh, which, of course, opens up with a very uh, uh, beautiful uh, melody that right off the bat shows how exciting this album is. Uh, like the way that the keyboards, drums, bass, and guitar all syncopate to one another sounds beautiful on there. And then, of course, Victoria Legrand comes in with her very hushed yet smoky and gorgeous vocals. Um, vocals. Uh, but the part that really does set this song apart from anything I've heard from Beach House before is the ending, which features this, like, uh, stream of different weird noises going on. It was like some noises that weren't supposed to happen, like, happen, like, the guitar is sounding really off-kilter, and then there's all these weird percuss percussive noises and stuff like that. It was something that, like, wasn't supposed to happen in the recording, but yet the, be the band, instead of deeming it inappropriate, just lets it flow the way it does. Yeah, I like how on this album they just kind of go with the flow and be in the moment. Like, uh, uh, they do that even more so than ever before on this album. Um, even on this album's more straightforward tracks, like Pay No Mind, definitely uh, have a certain kind of uniqueness to leave an impression on me. Like... Not only is the sexy guitar melody on the track very beautiful, uh, but also it has one of Victoria Legrand's greatest choruses, I think, uh, as this is definitely uh, one of the best written songs on the album, lyrically. Um, lyrically, it's just so satisfying to hear her croon, Baby, at night when I look at you, nothing in this world keeps me confused. All it takes... Look in your eyes. Um, your eyes. And then there's also some other really beautiful instrumentation. I love that kind of subtly roaring bass synth in the background. Uh, and the kind of huge arena inspired drums. And I think, and uh, I also heard a twinkling auto harp in the bridge, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, the first single to be released from Seven is the song Lemon Glow, and uh, it's definitely one of this album's standout tracks, and it was perfect choice for the single because it really does show how unique and ambitious Seven really is in its musical arrangements and song structures. Uh, structures, uh, of course, has got a very diverse array of keyboard sounds that managed to layer on top of each other really well as the song progresses. Uh, and it also features like Victoria Legrand's very ethereal, uh, very uh, be uh, like beautiful poetic vignettes. Um, yeah, it's sort of uh, likening the color of misery and 
you know, feelings of loneliness to like a lemon colored honey glow. Um, colored honey glow. And then it also, one of my favorite moments on the song is when uh, Alex Scally comes in with some kind of uh, a guitar solo that's not really like a live played guitar solo, but rather fragments of guitar playing with a significant amount of distortion on them, uh, sort of, uh, kind of bouncing in and out on the speakers, which I think is, uh, really cool, uh, and definitely a very unconventional way to add guitar solo instead of trying to just make the guitar scream or something like that. Um, one there. Uh, the song Ling Kun Yu, uh, is another one that really stood out to me as well. Of course, the title's in French, and French. Uh, this is one that I think, another one that I love because uh, it has so many, like, very exciting vocal work on it. Like, uh, it starts out with Victoria Legrand looping her voice and singing in kind of a cappella fashion. It sounds, so it sounds like kind of a seven-voice choir, but out of one woman's body. That's an amazing skill right there. And then of course it goes into uh, these uh, very uh, beautiful sort of cinematic uh, uh, guitar and keyboard stylings. I mean, stylings, I'm definitely hearing Mellotron samples of a choir on this song. And then of course it closes out with Victoria Legrand uh, singing a very sexy like sort of chant in French. Uh, which just sounds very beautiful, and it's really like, it's like having honey poured into your ears, but less sticky. <clears throat> sticky. Um, there's the song Drunk in L.A., uh, one of my favorite tracks on the record, because this is one example of Victoria Legrand maturing as a songwriter and really having the ability to crank out uh, some really... Uh, interesting, very uh, satisfying uh, poetic curveballs. Uh, like my favorite on here would have to be the line of memories of sacred meat that's drying all the time. Uh, on a hillside I remember, I am loving losing life. Like this is kind of a song, uh, sort of her in this phase of sort of uh, feeling kind of lost and uh, in an introspective moment that she's like very uh, like tantalized by uh, sort of walking around in uh, into dark and dead end rooms where there's drinks pouring and uh, you know candles to keep her warm. Uh, her warm, and then of course the chorus has that lovely line of "Had I had a good run, playing horses in my mind, left my heart out somewhere running, wanting strangers to be mine." Uh, my and her vocal on this track as she sings that just sounds like one of her most confident uh, and beautiful performances yet. And also I do think the instrumentation on the track is really nice. <coughs> Excuse. Also I do think the instrumentation on this track is really nice. Uh, like the song is uh, colored by uh, the song is colored by uh, some kind of uh, of immersive uh, neon keyboards uh, and guitar playing, as well as a bunch of strange instruments, including accordion. Uh, the uh, the next song "Dive" is the next song "Dive" starts out kind of like a, you know like a typical beach house song, like a very beautiful uh, simple keyboard melody, uh, some gentle uh, vocals and uh, kind of celestial guitar riff, uh, guitar riff, uh, definitely, but definitely still, even in that moment, it still sounds like a much more, uh, like a much more ambitious version of Beach House, uh, with, uh, her, ec with her vocals having in kind of a space echo effect going on on them, uh, going on them, uh, uh, but the part that really uh, takes the song over the edge and into more experimental territory, and in my opinion, what really takes the awesomeness of this track to the next level, yeah, is once it gets into that moment where it gets 
faster and heavier and actually louder. I mean, this is actually a loud, probably Beach House's loudest album to date as well. Uh, uh, where, where the drums are like, have a bunch of uh, stick and tom work going on, uh, uh, creating uh, this really kind of uh, driving, chugging arpeggio uh, alongside uh, some really amazing guitar playing that has some really cool, like, uh, psychedelic effects going on. It's like, it's as if uh, you think you're listening to a typical Beach House album, but meanwhile, it gives you the feeling like you've had something slipped into your drink or something like that. In a good way, of course. Uh, way of course. I mean, that moment is, like, that moment on the record is just, like, on point. Uh, the song Black Car is a much, uh, the song Black Car, while a much more low-key sounding track, still definitely has uh, some depth to it, for sure. Uh, I mean, it has by far one of the, by far one of the sexiest intro uh, keyboard riffs for a Beach House record that I've heard, uh, before it eventually goes into uh, some lyrics that, uh, it may take you a few listens to realize that this song lyrically is actually pretty dark because it is a song about how the anticipation for a car crash is way more uh, thrilling than the crash itself uh, if you listen carefully to the lyrics. And I like how the vocals on this track sort of turn into like almost a little chant because there's like three different major vocal parts of the song and they eventually get like stacked on top of each other uh, on top of each other and just sounding uh, really beautiful. Uh, so like you may and the car crash theme of this song is kind of vague and you don't really realize it until hearing the second line, the second verse that is of I skipped a rock and fell to the bottom. Uh, sort of envisioning like yeah the person just like hit a rock and you know the car turned over and of course yeah the person died in that scenario. Um, there you go. Um, the next track, uh, Lose Your Smile, is, your smile is kind of, uh, smile is another kind of more straightforward track on the record, but still has plenty of beauty to it, uh, with its, uh, to it, with its kind of, uh, a beautiful, uh, weeping slide guitar on the track, I think sounds really beautiful. Uh, and it's nuanced by some kind of uh, colorful uh, combinations of acoustic and electric guitars. So I think acoustic guitars are another thing that are used more prominently on this album than ever before on a Beach House album, but used really well, like on this track, uh, I think in particular. Uh, particular. Yeah, and I like how uh, her voice kind of... Uh, rises and falls uh, throughout the song. Like, uh, at first she sounds kind of uh, like pensive and low-key, but then she keeps her voice on perfect pitch as she sings, Lose your smile. I love it. <clears throat> love it. Uh, the song Woo is uh, another highlight for me on this album. Uh, yeah, on this album, this song almost has a little bit of a hip-hop funky groove going on, uh, with, going on. I mean, the drum machine sounds like it would totally be perfect as a sample from an underground rapper. And then, of course, you have all these beautiful keyboards that almost kind of submerge you, uh, like, in the music, uh, which uh, sounds really beautiful. Uh, and this is another one where I think the use of stacked vocals is really used beautifully on here, uh, while she's uh, like while uh, she's singing, uh, like while she's singing, uh, I can't keep you there. You're everywhere, forever glowing. You have this other voice that's kind of hushed. Uh, that somehow, if you listen very carefully to it, uh, you'll really find it uh, very uh, compelling, uh, and you'll find some very uh, uh, satisfying lyrics of uh, "You will braid your hair and throw it everywhere." While, uh, while noise, while walls of noise kind of crackle in and out throughout the track, sounding beautiful, which 
It sounds like a bunch of random street recordings recorded by a dictaphone that somehow are pieced together very nicely on this track. So you'll hear samples of like somebody clapping or uh, a couple of people laughing or someone going, woo, like hence the title, woo. <clears throat> no, woo. Uh, and then following that is another one that I definitely cite as a standout on this album, the song Girl of the Year, which, uh, uh, you know, I've heard a uh, Consequence of Sound uh, review for this album. I listened to the podcast version and thought it was very insightful and very interesting. Uh, interesting and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but, like, I didn't hear, uh, I haven't heard too many people cite Girl of the Year as a standout track, which, uh, yeah, I think it's crazy because, uh, in my opinion, this is one of, uh, one of the key tracks on this album because, uh, it really is, like, it sounds so, like, beautiful and cinematic and, I mean, that, I mean, that opening keyboard riff is just pure dream pop gold and it instantly gets me engaged into the song. Uh, song once Victoria starts uh, uh, bringing in lyrics about like this, uh, this seems to be like told from the point of view of a supermodel who's like, you know, uh, isn't very satisfied with her job uh, and uh, is kind of in it for the money and in, in this moment she feels like super like kind of uh, lonely and kind of uh, sort of in a low point right now and uh, they're about to like see her come undone on the big screen. Uh, big screen and sort of uh, kind of losing her mind a little bit. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, probably, uh, this song could be somewhat political uh, a little bit, sort of uh, a little bit, because, uh, like, uh, she feels, like, uh, the feelings here and, you know, the this, like, kind of uh, crazy pattern is, uh, like, caught in a, in a falling tear. Uh, falling tear. Uh, it's definitely uh, a song that uh, lyrically does sound, uh, like, kind of vague, but at the same time very uh, poetic and interesting if you're willing to uh, uh, pay attention. Uh, the closing track, Last Ride, is the longest song in the record, kind of a tradition that Beach House sort of has for a good chunk of their records. I mean, uh, uh, Bloom did close out with its longest track, Irene, which did have that long pause before a hidden track. Um, this one clocks in at over seven minutes, but it does manage to stay engaging in that seven minutes uh, because it has so many interesting phases. It starts out as kind of this melancholy, uh, Radiohead-esque piano dirge. Uh, piano dirge that eventually builds up with atmospheric instrumentation, like lush vocal harmonies and uh, string arrangements. Uh, but then it eventually uh, turns into some, the tempo speeds up a little bit, uh, but uh, keeps a nice, steady, sort of pace that sort of uh, helps you uh, kind of uh, have uh, kind of steady engagement uh, with this track, uh, which is kind of folky with its acoustic guitars and drums and tambourine. Uh, tambourine. Uh, tambourine. And uh, this is another song that uh, uh, lyrically is kind of vague, but at the same time it uh, definitely has uh, uh, some very uh, satisfying lines uh, like uh, to, Who takes your name back when he says he's four streets from your bed and I'm loving and sick? I mean that could only come from Victoria Legrand right there. Uh, friend. And the way that her vocals sort of change throughout the song, they're kind of hushed at the beginning but then they get more confident uh, and more kind of visceral by the uh, uh, middle of the track uh, before they eventually kind of uh, sort of uh, before it eventually uh, 
uh, compresses down to a whisper at the end of the track, uh, which closes out with uh, this really beautiful, atmospheric uh, guitar part uh, from Alex Scali. He's like creating this stacks of like uh, what sounds like loops and effects uh, created by guitars, but just sounding really beautiful and it's a really, it's a perfect uh, finish to this incredible record. Uh, Kurt says another example of the band sort of leaving something that wasn't supposed to be there, but yet keeping it because it just makes the beauty seem that much more raw. Uh, and that's what I love about Seven. Uh, this is a, a record that still is definitely very raw and kind of unadorned, uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, definitely still the band's most immediate, accessible, and uh, definitely their and definitely their most experimental record to date. Uh, but really making all these different sounds work, and you know they're not just indulging or anything like that. Because I find when bands change, try to deviate from their old sound completely and try to do something entirely different, it kind of falls through the cracks and it's just kind of uh, them just indulging a little bit uh, without any purpose. But Beach House in this case, they're splurging a little bit on this album with a pretty damn good purpose here. So I'm definitely given, uh, not, given a, a strong 9 out of 10 to uh, 7, the new record by Beach House. I highly recommend you check out this record. Get this record on vinyl. I mean, turn it on, uh, uh, turn it on your turntable, and sit sit back and let Seven take you wherever it does. Uh, that's my very glowing review for Seven, the new album for Beach House. I'll see you for episode two hundred and four.